Okay, hey guys, Player13FOC, and I'm going to be bringing you <coughs> a little something different. Today we're going to be looking at a tier list that I made up. Well, let's get rid of this. Um, this is expertly crafted in Notepad. Uh, very, very professional on my part, I do believe. But, um, yeah, we're just, we're, this is going to be a tier list for uh, 1v1, 20 kills. Uh, no potions, no healing potions, I should say. Um, just to clarify, some people allow potions. I know in Korea they allow them usually, um, but outside of Korea, at least in most places that I've planned, they're generally banned. Um, this is going to be with things like boss stealing allowed, stuff like that. You know, I, I want to make this because when you change the rules, the tier list immediately changes. If you go to 2v2, this is completely off. If you go to 40 kills, this is completely off. If you add potions, this is probably some significant change is going to get made. I don't know how much that changes things, but I imagine carries would get a little bit better. Heroes that farm really well would get a little bit better. Kill-dependent heroes would get a little bit worse. Not really the point now what I'm here to talk about. So this is 1v1, 20 kills no potions, no rules outside of no potions. Um, so I guess we'll just dive into it. I won't give a long, drawn-out explanation for each hero, because I feel like that would take a forever, but I'll give a brief explanation. This is in descending order, so A tier heroes <coughs> I think are the best, with F tier heroes being the worst. Um, in each tier, the heroes that I feel are a little bit better than the other ones are put slightly higher, um, and then they get worse as you go down the tier list. So I believe Psy is a good bit better than Daydar, even though they're in the same tier. Mind you, I feel like there's a pretty big gap between the tiers, and then inside the tiers there's not as big of a gap. So like there's a pretty big difference between Saber and Bakuya, but not as big of a difference between Bakuya and Lucy. Um, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and dive into this. Probably tired of hearing me talk about stupid shit. So we got the A tier. Um, I personally believe Aaron is the best 20 kill hero in the game if you're playing super seriously. I think he's really, 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 really strong. Um, just mobility burst damage sums it up. Shiki. He kills shit really good. Sasuke. Um, it's a 1v1 and he is completely independent of any kind of support or anything. He's one of the, he's like a semi-carry. If you let him get to the late game, he's going to beat mother, most of the other um, high tier heroes just because of uh, like Susano and his total potential burst damage with his like 60 years of stun. Neji, he farms really fast. If he gets too far ahead, he farms you out of fountain and you lose the game. Zoro, kills shit really good. Very hard to farm against. Sarutobi, <coughs> similar to Sasuke in that actually he's more of a full-fledged carry than Sasuke is. And if he gets to late game, then you're screwed while his early game is still good enough for him to be viable. Um actually very very viable early game in 1v1 uh, 20 kills. We got Saber. If you get hit by a tornado you're dead. This is pretty much sums it up. It's gonna deal like a million damage, silence you, and stop you from boarding out. It's really strong. Uh, as well as, you know, like just all of her buttons are really good. Just all of them are really good. Uh, Bakuya. Notice, oh, Aaron had a question mark. That's because I don't know if he's the best hero in the game, but I feel like he's the best. As, again, the, these are all very negotiable as one being better than the other. Very swapping one out for the other. This is very, very close up here. Um, Bakuya, I don't... I, I feel like the more serious you get, the further down on the list. Bakuya goes, because if Bakuya doesn't get, like, one or two early kills, it's very hard to do anything with him. Um, Bakuya is very snowball. If you manage to get, like, an early kill on him, he's A tier. 
if you don't, he's like C or D, really. Um, very, just needs one or two kills to, to get going, but if he doesn't get those, then he falls so far behind and he can't do anything at all. Lucy, I don't know. I really don't know how I feel about Lucy, because I haven't seen anybody who, like, really plays Lucy. Like, I've seen some people like, I'm going to play Lucy this game, and I was like, okay. But I've never seen anyone who, like, really hardcore plays Lucy. I believe he'd be in the B tier. Uh, B tier being kind of... Let, let me go over tiers real quick. A tier would be, like, these are the best heroes for this. B tier, these are very viable, strong heroes. C tier is like, these are playable heroes. D tier is like, e you probably don't want to play these. And F tier, like, don't, don't play, don't play H tier Saris in this fucking, don't do it. Don't, don't do it. But, uh, yeah, so Lucy, I don't know. I've never seen anyone who, like, really seriously plays him. Ace, I feel, um, is strong largely just based on the fact that he's strength and all of his skills are pretty good. Like, there's a certain point in a 1v1 where you just can't kill the other guy. And I mean, that generally happens when the other person is strength and you're like Zoro. And like, you just, you press all your buttons and he's still alive and you're just like, darn, I guess I just walk away now. And there's like really not a lot you can do. Ace has a pretty solid farming skill, um, and can rush reasonably well. He has a pretty strong early game. I don't know if he really belongs in the B tier. He might be more C, but he's... I like Ace, I guess, is really what it comes down to, is I like Ace as a hero. Brinji is very similar. I don't like him quite as much as Ace, but he gets a line nuke at level 2, he's strength, and he has a blink at level 1. Oh, and a C is stupid. It shouldn't even be in the game. A C is like one of my favorite skills. It's stupid. Um, Ulk. He kind of fills the same category as Saru and Sasuke, where he's like this hard carry that also has a blink and a line nuke at level 1, and is like just good enough to not get fucked over in the early game. And then if he gets to the late game, you're screwed. Um... Just assuming you're playing, like, some of the top, you know. If you're playing, like, Zoro or Neji or something like that, and he gets to the late game, you're probably in trouble. Um, C tier, these are going to be heroes that I think are playable, but not particularly, you know, great. These are these are the heroes that I consider, like, a big threats, and these are slightly less. Size at the top of this list. Um, he has really slow farming in the early game. Um... You can, around like level 8, you can go to golems and try and make some stuff happen there. His farming's just kind of slow, but if, one, if he gets a couple kills, or B, if he actually gets to sit there and farm with his E mid, he can turn that around pretty quick. He's also not terribly gold dependent in the early game, getting most of what he needs at level 8. Lee... Um, a lot of people will disagree with this. He's just too kill dependent, and if you just don't let him get kills, then he can't do a whole lot. He falls behind really hard. Kind of the same deal as Bakuya, but not quite as bad as Bakuya, because he does have, like, his Q to farm mid with, even though it's not very good. Um, but, yeah, he's rather snowball-y. Um, if he does get a little bit of a lead, then you're kind of screwed, especially since he's kind of like, you know, Ulk or whatever, where he's a carry, and if he gets far ahead, you're screwed. Um, Naruto is up here solely based on the fact that he has an E, and when he presses that, he kills golems, and that happens at level 10, and he kills a bunch of them, and it's scary, and then from that point on, he's like kind of an intimidating force. Kimmy, uh, we're kind of getting into carries that are scary if they get to do shit. Uh, we got Inuyasha. Mm, I might put him above, like, Kimmy now. Yeah, I'd probably. I don't know. Eh, they're all about in the right spot, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so he farms a lot. If he gets to farm a lot, he's scary. Toshiro. Um, I like Toshiro a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. This isn't really the place for him. Um... 
his early game burst damage is really good. His early game farming is really shitty. He gets to the late game, he's scary. Claire. Q QW combo is a lot of stun and a lot of damage. She recently got a buff where she can move through creeps with her C. Um, she's... I don't know. She's okay. Like, that, that, that pretty well sums up the C tier. It's like, is okay. Shaman is kind of weird. I haven't seen a lot of people play him well. I've fiddled around with him for a bit. He seems okay. Um, he seems like a hero that I'd kind of need to sit there and practice with for a bit to, like, really get anywhere with. Um, but he's fine. Kimpachi. Um... I don't know, I just feel meh about Kimpachi. Like, his... He's like this weird semi-carry, semi-rusher. He's just okay. He's just okay. Gara, I like Gara. I like Gara in 2v2, though. I don't like Gara as much in 1v1. He feels kill-dependent early. He feels kind of icky when you're farming with him because you feel like your opponent could just steal everything all the time. But he's okay at level 10. He, like, instantly shoots up to level a million. Um, just going top left. He's just... He's just kind of lackluster overall. Luffy, I don't know why they nerfed Izzy. He used to be, like, pretty good. I'd probably put him, like, closer to the top of <laughs> C tier back when his E was, like, a skill. Um, now it's, like, uh, it's just not as good. It used to, like, outrange silence. It was just absurd. But it doesn't do that anymore. And as such, he's not nearly as good. Alucard. Level 1, he has... Invis and a slow that does a bunch of damage. Level two, he gets a line nuke. That's a lot of damage, and his line nuke's pretty good, so he has pretty good farming. And then you get to like level, you know, twenty, and then his E after the first couple bosses just doesn't seem very good at all. And his R is like generic and then his ghoul things is like level 35 which is effectively a million in uh, it's like literally level a billion you know, on 20 kills like it, it just comes in too late and you have that big awkward phase between like level 12 where you're just killing everything and then like level 35 where you get you know your infinite farming bullshit and there's just this big awkward phase where I just I don't I don't know what to be doing on this hero. It's like you can kind of kill golems as well as any other line nuke hero, and you can kind of kill people as well as like any other hero. You can kind of kill bosses as well as like you're just mediocre. Daedara. Um Daedara originally was like here ish, um, probably, but with the new buff where he has a C button and he like explodes it like greatly increases his viability he's like yeah he's at the very bottom of like the viable heroes which I feel is accurate he's like he's again very kill dependent which is like if your opponent does not fuck up you don't really have a way to force kills but if your opponent does fuck up you can blow them up. Like, you can blow them up real good. Like, literally, blow them up. Um, QW does a tremendous amount of damage. Just Kunai QW, dead. Um, your W scales very well into the late game. Your E scales pretty well into the late game. You get, like, plus 5k health, and it's got, like, 75% uptime. It's pretty good. Uh, your farming ult is very good. The thing you can't farm. You cannot farm. Your mid farming is bad. Your goal in farming until like level 19 or whatever where you get your level of Q that kills pretty bad. Your E doesn't kill many golems. Just doesn't really farm well enough. It just doesn't have you know a way to get gold to get to 25. It doesn't have you know it's not great at farming mids, not great at farming golems. Just has trouble getting to 25 after 25 smooth sailing. Amazing. 
uh, W just does too much fucking damage. Um, Alright, now we're getting into the heroes that I consider, like, kind of unviable. We've got Goku. Um, Goku is pretty good until you start losing. And once you start losing, you do not stop losing. Um, if you're ahead, you're fine. If you're not ahead, your burst damage sucks. This is later in the game, mind you. Your early game burst damage is pretty good. Later in the game, burst damage is trash. Your QW does not scale very well. Your 10 times Kamehameha does not scale very well. Not gonna hit anybody with a spirit bomb. If you do, it's fucking hilarious, but it's not something you should be aiming for on a regular basis. Um, he farms very, very fast. He has a blink, he's strength, he's very hard to kill. Um, but that's it. He's hard to kill. And he farms fast. But if you get ahead, if your stats are ever higher than Goku's, after like the first, you know, few minutes, you lose. This is Goku. Goku cannot come back, um, in my opinion. Edward, I don't really know if he belongs this low on the list. Um, I don't know. I feel like anyone that's played Edward just feels like what, like they know why he's here. It's just like, I don't know. I pressed a million buttons and didn't do any damage. It's like your Q never actually fully kills golems. Your E is like amazing. He is so good. It kills a guy and then it farms gold. This is great. But, um... I don't know. I, I just... He just doesn't do damage. Um, you got Gilgamesh. Um, I didn't even bother typing out his name. That's how much I don't like this hero. Um... He just doesn't do anything. Like, if you leave him AFK at golems, he'll do a lot. Don't leave him AFK at golems. Like, just break the gate, whatever. He farms golems really fast if you let him sit there. It's like, yeah, if you let Gara sit at golems, you know, he's really good. Just don't let him do that. Kasami. Um... Mm, I think I like Kasami more than Gilgamesh. Maybe more than Edward. Actually, I think Kasami belongs at the top of the D tier. Um, that, that's probably where I'd put him, now that I think about it. Until level 7, you don't do shit. Once you hit level 7, if your opponent fucks up, you can get an easy kill. After 10, you're kind of intimidating. But getting to 10 is really rough, assuming your opponent does not do the fucking up. If your opponent fucks up, well, you know, suddenly a lot of heroes become really viable. But this this list is assuming that your opponent does not fuck up. Misaka. There's, there's a question mark here. I don't know. I've never seen anybody that, like, seriously just plays Misaka. Um, she feels really weird to me. Like, it doesn't feel like all of her buttons were meant for the same character. Like, she it's like her Q is this really long range fucking farming thing. And then her W is basically melee. And her E is melee and gives her unit walking. And then her R is an avatar farming. Like, it, uh, they, there's not synergy there. Like, I think she's okay i don't really know where to put her though like she feels really weird to me um you could probably put her in the c tier i i i could see her being in the c tier but i just i don't i don't understand the hero i really don't um she was definitely d tier back when she didn't have a w at level one and you just like had to muscle your way up to level two um yeah then F tier, you've got Ichigo, who's just really hard to play in 1v1 20 kills, because, like, by the time you're level 5, your opponent has, like, 4 or 5 kills, usually. I've seen some people play Ichigo somewhat decently in 20 kills, but, like, everyone pretty much just, you know, understands this This is not the place for this hero. And Ceres, I don't know what the fuck they did. Ceres, as best I can tell, no longer has her vampire form. I don't understand why this hero is in the game. 
I don't know what this hero is doing. I would put the, I would put that hero in that spot on every tier list. Like it doesn't matter what the kill setting is. It doesn't matter what the team size is. I would put her on the F tier, assuming that I'm correct about her va vampire form being removed. If there's somewhere other way to activate it, I would love to hear it. But as best I can tell, she does not have that anymore. I don't know why she's in the game. R remove her, give us back Enol or Orochimaru. Give us back Orochimaru. I want Orochimaru back. Fuck Lancer. Um, yeah, that, that's how I feel about Ceres. Throw her away, give us back Orochimaru. Um, yeah, so this... That, that, that concludes my tier list discussion. I understand a lot of people are going to disagree with this. Um, in fact, I most of the people that I play with I know are going to disagree with several things that I've put on here but this is just my opinion um, and I'd also like to know this is not my favorite hero list. I don't play I don't play Eren, I don't play Shiki, I don't really play Sasuke I play Neji, I play Zara, I play Sayer Toby, I kind of play Saber um, this is definitely not a list of my favorite heroes at all um, this is just the heroes that I think are most viable in this kill setting. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know, uh, like, any changes you would make or whatever to this. I'd love to hear that. Always interesting to uh, hear other people's point of view. Anyway, um, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching.